Vinil and Kanika. Welcome to Film Me Show Me. It's wonderful to be in conversation with you both today. Thank you, Anuj. Thank you, Anuj. So, um, uh, you know, Hasin Dilruba Vinil is your second directorial. And, you know, I think it's, I believe it's the first time you both have actually worked together, uh, I think, for a feature film in this sense as well. So how important is it for a writer and a director to sort of have a common vision? And what was that commonality for you both um, in Hasin Dilruba? Uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, we, it, the whole journey starts with the director and the writer coming together. And I think uh, if the tuning is not there and if there is no kind of, you know, uh, uh, there's no common vision, then, you know, uh, uh, I mean, that forms the basis for your journey going ahead. So uh, I think uh, when Kanika narrated the story initially to me, uh, I, I just was drawn so much to the world she created, the, the complexity of characters, the complexity of the narrative. So I think it was both the challenge and the uh, and the fun I would have eventually. I could see that coming because you know it, it was such a low hanging fruit in terms of a juicy uh, narrative. Uh, so I think um, uh, I just heard the story and it kind of stayed with me for days. And uh, then you know uh, I had some kind of uh, things which I was wanted to address and the Kanika was very gracious. And then, you know, there's a great sense of teamwork because she's somebody who is very, very collaborative. She's somebody who is very easygoing in that sense. And I think eventually both of us want to tell a very compelling story out there in the film and make it entertaining for the audience, you know, because primarily it's it's meant to be a, a entertaining ride. And, and uh, the fact, the bonus, of course, is the fact that it also dwelt in complex human relationships. It's had really, really wonderful, great characters. So yeah. I think in that sense, we all share, both share the same vision for the story and kind of, you know, that just formed the blueprint for us to go, going ahead. Right. Now, Kanika, when I watched the film, it really made me nostalgic of Roald Dahl's Lamb to the Slaughter, as well as your other written works um, in films like Man Marzia and Judgmental Hekia as well. So how much of these texts were an inspiration for you when you were actually creating uh, the writing for Haseen Dilruba? Well, uh, firstly, uh, the I, I, I can understand why there is a nostalgia because of the weapon that is used is is mutton. <laughs> but if you look at uh, but if you look at uh, Haseen in entirety, you know I've said this before also. You know the kitchen and the, the mutton element plays a very important role uh, from the from the entire co conceptualization of the love story between the between the main couple. Uh, you know, and not only that, even as an Indian household, so we know that what the importance uh, of the great Indian kitchen in the family politics and in the uh, in the marriages and love stories. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, I have tried to kind of uh, bring that as a layer and. And uh, if you see the motif of uh, mutton, uh, which is re representation of the transgressions that are made in a in a private relationship, uh, in a personal relationship, uh, in, where Rani is supposed to be this vegetarian uh, bahu who kind of uh, goes for the uh, you know uh, kind of slips and uh, goes moves to the other side, the tempting side, and starts making mutton for the lover. The forbidden, uh, goes over to the forbidden territory. So there are a lot of, uh, at least in my head, there were a lot of motives and a lot of themes that I was playing with in my head, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why eventually, you know, even in all the key story elements, be it uh, the first transgression that is made, it is made because through the, the mutton element where she goes and cooks for him. And then the second big kick in the story is when she finally makes a beautiful dish, perfect dish for him and she's jilted by him. And eventually the story culminates, that he, she kills him with the same uh, motive of, uh, you know, the mo same symbol of love kind of, uh, that we've seen, um, you know, blossom as, you know, their relationship has blossomed uh, between Neil and, uh, and, and Rani. So it is not, like, if you see it in totality, you will see that this, this murder weapon is woven in, in a very uh, um, layered manner from the word go. And the only, uh, similarity I would say is that the there's a murder that has happened and mm -hmm. uh, the weapon happens to be um, you know a mutton uh, leg so I, I so I can understand why it seems a little familiar but mm -hmm. beauty is not and coming to Manmarzia and judgmental like yeah well 
uh, of course it's been it's it's written by the same person and uh, there is a very loud and very um uh, you know um unapologetic way my characters talk and they interact so um they, it could be a factor of that as well um and another thing could also be that uh, manmarziya did touch upon the dysfunctionality of an arranged marriage in a smaller uh, in 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 a, yeah. in a you know it touched in uh, touched upon it i mean not many people caught it but it was there very much there and uh, hasin duba does it in a much bigger manner so uh, because i personally am fascinated by the entire concept of arranged marriages in india 6, 70 of the youth even today um, goes in for an arranged marriage and i think that's the biggest gamble that one takes in their life because literally you yeah. uh, go and get married to a stranger the, and mm-hmm. there is and the, the criteria of choosing a life partner has nothing to do with emotional cap- capability that both of you have or the compatibility mm-hmm. that you guys will have the criteria for choosing a partner in arranged marriages is more of a transactional nature it is more of education uh, height weight color uh, prospects you know it's almost like buying a, and selling a land it's very transactional like a bu- yeah bucket list almost you know exactly. a criteria exactly exactly mm. and how are these two people who maybe fit together in a transactional manner how what is the guarantee that there is going to be an emotional cap- uh, compatibility zero what is the mm. guarantee there's going to be a sexual compatibility it's all the one yeah. one way you know this we Indians are the biggest gamblers because they gamble with their lives. That is one thing that literally, uh, you know, it's like arranged marriage is a potluck. You may have the best, uh, you may find your soulmate through it, and sometimes you may not. So mm-hmm. I'm fascinated by the entire aspect of arranged marriages, and it will continue to pop up in my future stories as well. As, as long as you're enjoying them, as long as it's a different ride, I mean, uh, I'm I'm all up for exploring it in various ways. Right. Right. Yes. No. No. I. I. I completely understand that. And I think Vinil. Um. I read in an interview actually where you mentioned that you would have shot the film differently. Um. Had it not been scheduled for a Netflix release or an OTT release. So how would a filmmaking style be different? Had it obviously released more theatrically. So on. Um. Yeah. So Anuj. Uh, I think. Um. Uh, you know uh, what I mentioned earlier also is that. uh there are two diff- i mean for me personally and you know my approach would be different in two accounts one is of course uh, dealing with the story as such uh, and second is the technical aspect of it you know the, the grammar of your execution so um i think uh, when you're doing something for theatricals uh, your primary objective is to get your box office numbers you know there's mm-hmm. a lot of inertia on uh, on part of your theater going audience to kind of you know they have to leave Uh, you know they have to come together go out there pay money and watch a film so you know there's the 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 threshold of actually conversion is uh, really high and you have to ensure that you have enough bells and whistles uh, in your trailer and your film that it attracts that audience to come and see it so maybe on a superficial level you're trying hard to kind of get everybody out there and pull in you know uh, to the uh, pull in people to the theater um mm. what ott allows you is that the sheer convenience of consuming content you know because there's the threshold is far more lower because you know you can just you know you can just switch on your phone or an ipad or whatever and consume it immediately so uh, what then it allows is that because the pressure of box office is not on your head uh, the fact that you have uh, you know and uh, especially with bollywood films which is addressing a diverse market you know because you there's an averaging out of your storytelling because you need to ensure that the film is so accessible that somebody in gujarat is enjoying it as well as somebody in bengal as somebody in punjab and now these are semi small countries and you know you're talking to a pan india audience so the fact that you there is there could be a bit of simplification in the way you approach things because you want people across the board to kind of you know enjoy your film uh, ott you know that you can push the boundaries more it can be far more experimental it doesn't have to please everybody it can be more provocative it can be more uh, you know uh, uh you, you can push the uh, storytelling a bit more so i think it definitely allows you that if you know from the beginning that this is where your film is going to be consumed you can tailor your vision accordingly but these are again minor changes in quibbles i i think eventually what hasin dilroba has proven to us is that a compelling story told well uh just kind of travels across different kinds of formats and mediums it still is being like I, mean, i was 
anxious earlier but now uh, two weeks down the release uh, seeing the numbers we have getting 22 countries the number top 10 i mean imagine wow. countries like brazil and argentina which have no nothing to do with a country like india and this is a story so rooted firmly in indian pulp that the fact that it's actually resonating with a completely diverse audience across countries i mean forget india there's a global audience now and it's still working you know so that yeah. that's something which merits attention now and i think it's given me a lot of comfort in terms of now being open to kind of you know uh, you know being kind of a format or uh, uh, distribution agnostic in that sense because you know that fundamentally if your stories uh, are told well and they're engaging and they're entertaining uh, and if they're hum good human stories they travel well irrespective of your format technically mm -hmm. i would of uh, course want to change things because when you're shooting something when you're devising your visual language whatever you know like you have a big screen and so you you know that uh, somebody is going to like a close up on a big screen or a long shot on a big screen is going to look very different from uh, that when you're watching it on your phone because you know so mm -hmm. things like a close up for instance you would probably have more of that in a smaller screen and also the fact that as opposed to a communal viewing experience where you're watching something with 500 people you're going you know you might be doing a solitary viewing you might watch it while you're traveling somewhere you might watch it while you're uh, you know in the car or you know where there's a pressure cooker running off in the kitchen so those are elements then i would uh, kind of address earlier if i know what my uh, you know outlet is going to be in terms of my sound design in terms of my music because um, uh, you know your uh, there are certain kind of technical limitations of different mediums and then you would can tailor your approach mm -hmm. to it uh, differently yeah but otherwise i think at the heart of it if it's a good story told well it just travels really well yeah very well said um, and i think also uh, i've got a i've got to touch on this because it's been it's been huge obviously i mean as well as the love that's been given, there's also been some backlash. In fact, I know, like, um, Kanika, I read up as well, you also gave very befitting responses to people who were skeptical and who were, like, uh, not so sure about, you know, the film and, you know, raise objectivity to it as well. In fact, I know Tapsi also did as well. In fact, one critic, you know, sort of pointed out that the toxic masculine love aspect the fact that a woman needing to prove herself in the kitchen while being denied any rights for herself and in a way she I think that critic was saying it was normalizing domestic violence what is your response towards these uh, uh sort of negative responses and this backlash and how do you feel about such reactions were you prepared for it at all when you were making the film uh Kanika would you like to go first see yeah yeah see um uh... The point is that you know, for every uh, uh, for every negative uh, uh, reaction towards uh, you know understanding the the gender politics in the in the in the film, there's also uh, you know very positive reactions and interpretations. Today morning itself, I read uh, another article by an expert in Hindu, which said that Kanika smashed patriarchy with her single rupa. So you know, if I am supposed to, well, I. Diverse opinions, very welcome. Uh, uh, but if you ask me, uh, do I agree with the fact that my film uh, has glorified domestic violence? I've said it time and again, and I completely disagree because uh, very clear indications and we've been very careful uh, in, in taking care of the fact that we do not, uh, you know, um, um, fall into the trap of glorifying uh, an abusive man and those where they're very key indicators and I will quickly uh, uh, lay them out for you in terms of gender politics. Uh, well, the woman is the one who's more enabled. She is the one who has all the power with her and at, in, at no point in the story is she manipulated or forced to do something against her will. So my gender politics is absolutely on point as per my understanding of how gender politics should be. And uh, coming to glorification of the domestic violence point, well, the fact that, uh, you know, it has been misunderstood by some that perhaps the woman fell in love with the man because he turned violent towards her, which again, I say is a misreading of the, of the situation. And perhaps a few scenes are being seen out of context because very clearly uh, we made sure that there is a scene where the woman falls in love with the man and it has nothing to do with the violence. The violence has not even started where he stands up for her. It's a suitcase scene where uh, she's about to leave him and the husband uh, goes out and helps her uh, you know, get a rickshaw and where the other men who are making fun of this woman and he goes and tells her that you go inside while the husband stands there and faces all the wrath and the entire humiliation of it all. And that's when she decides that I'm going to be there for this man. So 
the fact I'm, I'm going into this much detail because we've been called out on a few scenes, but then it is unfair because please see what comes before and what comes after. Now, if you were to start a uh, singling out scenes, then every film is going to be problematic because there is going to be a murder or a rape or an act of violence in every film. But what happens before and what happens after and the intention of the makers is very important to be factored in when you're making an overall judgment. Having said that, very happy uh, to have this conversation because it is an important conversation. Having said that, happier that the audiences have loved it. Happier that there are much, uh, there are many more people who've seen the film for what it is and uh, loved today's article, which says that our film has smashed patriarchy. So, um, all are welcome. Very well said. Very well answered. I think, Vinil. What about you? Um, how? I mean, were you prepared for any sort of um backlash by critics or by people who uh might not have digested well uh some of the things that were shown in the film? So Anuj, uh, I'll be honest. Obviously, uh, one doesn't uh, look forward to criticism, and you know, uh, we, uh, you know, but we make it with so much love, and we put in so much of ourselves into the film that uh, we would uh, uh, love appreciation for it. Um, but having said that, a couple of things. I mean, uh, pretty much what Kanika said, and it's been said ad nauseum across various platforms. That look, uh, I think what is important is your uh, intent. And context, you know, these are two important things where you, you know, analyze a film, and um, you know, both were, uh, you know, we are, and we and the promise the film makes, you know, and the promise was like of an entertaining pulp film, and suddenly mm -hmm. if you take out two scenes and change the context and put a different intent to it, it can always mm -hmm. seem like something else, and which was not the case, you know, which we felt, I felt a little wronged when people attacked us on that. Uh, that apart, uh, I think. Um, uh, there are many filters with which you can look at a film from, you know, of course, the politics of it is a very important one. But, you know, the fact that if you apply only one filter to kind of evaluate a film, I think that is also unfair, you know, because you can evaluate the film on other aspects in terms of cinematography, in terms of storytelling, in terms of direction, performance. So, blah, blah. so there's so many other things. And I think uh, a binary understanding or evaluation of film is something which uh, one wouldn't want uh, for your uh, film. But, um, you know, uh, once the film is out there, it's no longer yours. It's everybody's and people will have opinions and one has to respect that. And I would be very with humility, except, uh, you know, if there are problems, if it's not, did not land in a way people would have wanted it to. Uh, when these criticisms just make us, uh, help us to improve our craft and come out better the next time. Uh, but as right. long as it's coming from a good, valid, legit space, you know, uh, where as long as it's not personal, as long as it's like uh, if somebody's made the effort to review it with certain kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, how, because, you know, we put two years of our life and there's a lot of collective wisdom which goes in our film. And I just, my request would be to people is to invest themselves as much, or at least a part of it, you know, uh, to kind of understand the film you know if something is unfamiliar don't ditch it you know appreciate the fact that there is something more to it so i mean uh but you know it's part of the game we're all in it for the long haul uh, hopefully and uh, i think uh, we have the, the the humility we accept praise and we'll accept criticism as well and if there's something to be learned from it of course we're going to you know take it and you know analyze that and work on it Fantastic. Very well said. And I think on a final note, before I let you both go, um, you know, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Hasito Pasi. I It's one of my favorite movies of all time, I think, in terms of Hindi cinema. And, um, you know, I really love the, you know, the way you kind of add this sense of quirkiness to your films, you know, it's very, very refreshing. Um, so I think what inspires, you know, the sort of way you tell your story and how will your future work sort of represent that? And I think, Kanika, I think also extending that question to you as well. I mean, I love the way you've kind of addressed several topics, like societal topics through uh, your works. I mean, be that of sexual uh, harassment in in guilty or even a satire on mental health through judgmental hair care as well. So what are you most influenced by as a writer? So I think Vinod, we'll start with you first about your storytelling and then Kanika, we'll go with you and then we'll wrap up. I think, uh, you know, I've always maintained that uh, there are two ways you can choose your stories. One is what you would want to say. And the second is how you want to tell your story. And I, I come from the latter school of, uh, you know, directing where, you know, I, I, uh, your personality does leak into the work you do. 
do you know even if it's a, a topic which you are not you know it maybe it's not a subject matter which people might connect you with but the way you look at the lens at which you look at the the, the subject uh, will definitely have elements from your personality it's part of my voice it's part of how, who i am and i i love delving into human relationships and i love humor i mean uh, uh, you know i i i have a certain <laughs> sense of humor when people know me they 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 know that and uh, i love emotional stories as well uh, and i like to entertain people fundamentally you know because um, uh, for me that's really important because that's what we have to do uh, you know and especially times like these you know um, where um, uh, for me the the primary element is always to go out there and entertain the audience and they should have a good laugh they should have a good cry they should get scared they should get thrilled i mean if that successfully happen that's my primary objective Uh, mm-hmm. If a message comes through, great. If it doesn't come, then that's fine enough, you know. But as long as that you're enjoying a good two hours and it's it's time well spent, I'm happy, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, and I think what makes for interesting collaboration is when you know a writer has a different personality and a director has something else, and then they come together, you know, on the whole. Yeah. Yeah, something refreshing come out, you know, and and that's the joy of filmmaking process because everybody brings their like the actors bring their own personality to it. Your uh, other collaborators get and. i think what comes out is something you can't anticipate you can't uh, kind of you know predict but uh, there's a fifth option which comes out which is a result of all our kind of collective voice come together and it's and as long as the mix is fun i think we are on you know we are safe and it's on a good track wonderful and kanika what about you um, again because like you mentioned you know you're very influenced by i think the world around you and the sort of society that we live in as well so is that what's going to sort of i guess help you uh, in your future works as well as a writer yes uh, absolutely you know um, who you are um, plays a very important role in how your pen moves you know and uh, you know i read somewhere that uh, we write to taste life twice in the moment and in uh, retrospect and i think that made a uh, complete sense to me that you know when uh, when i'm writing about um, characters and situations it is very personal it is my characters are very personal the way they respond to uh, uh different situations around them uh reflect my attitudes and opinions towards uh say a mental health issue or say a uh, uh, sexual harassment or say um uh, you know uh, uh, in kedarnath we had that whole love jihad uh topic or say in manmarzi on the dysfunctionality of marriage uh um uh, the fickleness of love so these are things that i as a person i i resonate with i feel strongly about and i would and that's why perhaps uh, you know i i get the passion and i get the um you know the the joy to write uh, because it is so personal and because i do feel so strongly about it and i think i guess um that's the only thing that's going to drive me to write my future stories as well it's true and i'm really glad that finally writers and directors are getting that due credit now because there was a time when they didn't get that and i'm really really glad that you know we can see that shift happening as well thanks to platforms like netflix as well which i think really encourages that and i'm really really glad to see that sort of shift too uh, in that sense as well we're very glad as well <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> no, wonderful but i think vinil and kanika i mean this is a dream duo i think to have an interview with and i'm very very privileged that i've been able to speak with you both uh, on haseen dilruba i mean it is um a very different film it's a, it has a very fresh voice and i think um it's wonderful that you know it's getting such great traction on netflix worldwide and i think uh, just wanted to congratulate you both once again and thank you so much for joining me on filmy show me thank you Thank, thank you, you thank you